Hi everybody, good evening. Uh, my name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all uh, who sent in thesauruses for me and suggested that if I use the word incredible, this show as much as I used it recently, you're either going to stop watching the show or not believe that I actually went to either high school or college. So we're going to try to work around that tonight, so I just want to thank you because people actually did send in thesauruses for me, or certainly those pages with incredible on it. Well, tonight we have a cosmic show, something that really seems like the skies and the heavens are going to open up. As you can hear behind me, there's harp music, celestial harp music, that's coming from Joel Andrews, who's a master harpist from many years, many years. I would say that, that Joel is the most famous New Age harpist in the world. And although there might be some people who have equal techniques, in my experience, in terms of intuitive sense, in terms of psychic sense, when Joel plays the harp, extraordinary things happen. And, and with him tonight, we have uh, his wife and partner, Serafina Andrews, who's a poet and an author and is going to read her poetry for us on the set. And, and her poetry is just extraordinarily sensitive and beautiful and, and heart opening. So, and then we're also one of uh, our, our former guests, uh, David from The Light Party, sent in this this beautiful, beautiful uh, tape, this videotape that we're going to show you a few clips of tonight called Flower Power. So as we normally do at this time, uh, I lead you in a short meditation to set the tone for the show, to get that experience settled in us, to place us in our hearts and in our love. So please join me. If you don't know how to meditate, if you don't have a technique, just quiet and follow your breath just for a short time and just try to experience the, the love within you, the deepest part within you. Thank you. And now we're going to have an improvisational piece by Joel Andrews that I know we've talked a lot about this show about dedicated to the oneness. And, and he asked me what I would like to hear and what I thought the audience would like to hear him psychically and intuitively bring forth in his music. And what I said is a piece based on cooperation, of working together, working in unison, in oneness. And Joel said, Okay, let's go. So, Joel, let's go.
Thank you, Joel. That was really beautiful. And here I am. I guess you can see I'm with Serafina Andrews. Hi. Hi. So after that, so, I, I guess we should work together and cooperate. <laughs> oh, that's what I felt. It was such a privilege to think of oneness from the meditation and then come into the music. And I, I, I'm so grateful to be a part of this and be a part of the earth and the people around the earth that are thinking this way now. And yeah, we were talking about that earlier. At the it's, it's so exciting because it's hope. You know, we have the hope of the future in this concept. And, and, and do you see it manifesting more? Or do you see, what is your, I mean, you travel uh, all over the world, you two, and you just do programs um, all over. Do you find people seemingly more apt to work together and not have ideas and concepts preventing that? What is your experience? Uh, that's a big question. <laughs> but I talk about from it my every heart, week. From my heart, in having the honor to travel with Joel Andrews and be a part of he the concert. He told me the same thing about you. <laughs> no, no, no. This is my truth. That meeting people all over the world, the centers, the inspiration that is coming through these centers, and the service people are dedicating themselves to, to help lift the integrity of the life on earth and, and how we care about our earth and the people and our children that are coming up into this new century, there's lots of hope and beautiful people really doing it with all their heart to really working together, make it work. Putting egos aside as best, it's, as best we it's humans really can. really happening, yeah. And that's why, um, you know, I was so privileged to be asked to read some poems because it was through Joel's music that I had a, just a showering of light come through me at one time. And it was as if I had opened this veil into a, 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 an angelic realm. It was like just a, a mist in front of me, and all you have to do is open it. And it's there for all of us to experience the wisdom, the heartbeat, the love, the concern that these higher beings, be what you call them, are there for us now. And through that, I just had amazing experiences in writing. And, and you put that experience as best you could down on paper. And that, right. that's the, the, you're going to read five poems for us tonight, and that right. a little bit later on. Right. And that is from your book, Keys, Keys, of, Passage. Keys of Passage. And I was, um, one evening, we were on a concert tour in Europe. And I was going to write, actually, I'm like a scribe in a way. I hear this wonderful information and it kind of flows through me. I just put myself aside and, and say an affirmation and the, these beautiful inspirations come through. And one story happened when we were in The Hague in Holland and we were on a tour there in Europe and this whole table of contents came through, about 34 poems. I, I couldn't believe it, just in one night. And as we were traveling through Europe in these sacred places, each poem came through, and I said, oh my gosh, what's going on here? And everywhere we went, I couldn't open doors. I, I put a key in my hand, and the door wouldn't open, and the whole titling of the poems were Keys of Passage. And uh, one, for example, one poem that I was writing uh, came as Ave Maria because my husband was opening his concerts with the Bach Ave Maria, and it inspired me very much. And I was writing this poem one evening, through a concert, and a lady came up who spoke in Russian. I couldn't understand her very well, but I felt something happening. She said, I want you to have this photograph. I've had it for 20 years in my purse. It's yours. You need it. And it was the Black Madonna. Mm. And I thought, how incredible. Here I am writing Ave Maria, and she's confirming this with me. So things like that happened all through that tour when these poems were coming through. I can remember being in uh, an ancient, I think medieval, church where Joel was doing another concert, and on the wall were these incredible medieval drawings of saints, and you know, I looked down in my hand and all of a sudden I was seeing these visions of a past experience, and then more poems came. So that's how the book came about, and at the end of our tour we went to Assisi and experienced the little chapel of St. Francis. And we were sitting in this little chapel and someone told us the story of how they built this huge basilica around the chapel. And 200 years ago it had an earthquake and the whole basilica fell down. But the only thing left standing was the St. Francis little chapel. Was the little chapel of St. Yeah, Francis. Incredible. 
And as I walked out, I was asking, please show me a cover for the poems, a book. And I looked up in the ceiling, and there were these incredible angels holding golden keys. Ah. So all along the way, there were confirmations of things happening that I was on track. <laughs> okay, so maybe what we'll have now is uh, Serafina will read uh, five poems from her book, Keys of Passage. Keys of Passage. Okay, here we go. Okay. The first one's called... And by the way, Joel's going to be playing right. behind her improvisationally, so... This is exciting. This, we're in for a we'll treat. <laughs> Keys of Enlightenment. Remember the lightning in your youth? The fire dance of heaven? Swirling silhouettes? Dazzling in the eye? This, my friend, is love enlightenment. Not a moment to elude, but a time to awaken your thoughts. To heavenly notes, flaming on a ribbon of bells. Thousands of bells, all shimmering in gold, with tintinabulations of cloud white. For each day you live on earth in love. This one's called Keys of Joy. Windy god of the classic myth, you grip this joy on thrones of luminous mist. We call you now, Aeolus, to release the mysteries of joy. Let them be a myth for now, reigning in pageantry, charging through the hearts of all humanity, purifying the winds of exaltation, claimed ruler of this earth. Now this one is called Keys of Marriage. It's a totally different way of thinking about marriage. I haven't had much luck thinking about it anyway. <laughs> So let me, maybe this will help Let's me. Let's see what happens yeah, let's here. See how this works. Okay. Maybe something will come over me. <laughs> I see the mystic rose. Rose cross with two paths, crossing on the edges of togetherness. I see the mystic playing the magic wisdom on his toes. He celebrates today his marriage with the one who clouds the mind to whiteness and blinds the pulse to shortened breath as he crosses the waters of scented petaled water and lies his soul to the altars of sunrise. Thank you. And of course, I always look for joy. I love joy. Let's have more of it. So this is one more I'm for joy. I'm better at joy than marriage. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> joy. Looking through a keyhole, I see a secret joy is holding in her arms. She smiles at me as she looks, as she sees my tiny eyes blink in a moment of wonder. She turns in circles and spins the wind in her skirts of diaphanous mist and looks back to see if I'm listening to her prayers. One after one a joy is set free, flying the currents of curiosity, bringing a sweetness to weeper's lament. I know your secret joy of earth and hold it tight within my heart. So for the last one, this actually was the last poem that I wrote, and that was in, in Assisi and it's called Surrender. This, my friend, is the last step taken on the path. This is the final laughter in the heart of disconnect. 
this is the moment when the soul speaks to spirit, giving right of passage to the uprooted mind of confusion. There is no less, there is no more the heart can hold. Final worship surges to great infinity. God grants passage in the surrendering love of your own true soul. Do you still write poetry? I mean, do you still feel that you're a vehicle for doing that? Well, I poems come when they should. Uh, Have any come recently, let me put it that way. Actually, yes. In fact, we were doing an angelic present, opening to the angelic presence workshop a few days ago, and we wrote poems and one, a poem came through. Really? But um, I also do counseling, and the wisdom is there for everyone. It's just a matter of asking for help, and you can find it. How, how can you do counseling? Because you travel so much. You counseling like... You know, as you go, have council well, will travel. It's amazing because people come when they're, when they're meant to come. And I say, God, send me the people I can really help. Uh-huh. So you have, like, actually a come. traveling practice. Yes, in Europe. That's fantastic. As, and That's Europe, really especially fantastic. Europe. Yes. So it's a privilege. <laughs> really? uh, okay, so I guess now, uh, for the first time on, on national television, or actually the first time on any kind of television, we're honored to have a video put together by D David of the Light Party. It's called Flower Power, and it's just, uh, well, just watch it and see. I mean, when I first saw it, I said, this is really beautiful, and I'd like to share it with, you know, the people who watch the show. So, uh, are we ready for that? Okay, let's go. Thanks. another little clip of that later. I, I think it's really beautiful. So here I am, Joel. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Welcome. it's great That's to good. be here. It's been That's, a while. Yeah, it's, it really has been a while. Joel and Serafina were guests before, and we got so many positive comments that we said, you know, if we have another season, which we didn't, obviously, here we are, uh, that we have to have them back, and we called, and it just was working out that they were coming down the coast, and they had such a nice experience that, you know, we were just, we we're fortunate that you're here. So, so what have you been up to? Just oh, same wow. same thing of traveling and playing well, and a lot of the same things. But I've been working on a new album, and it's a secret at this point. But I just love it. I love working on new albums, and we've been moving up to the north. Yeah, you went to from from somewhere to Mendocino, right? Yeah, from Santa Cruz to Santa Mendocino. Santa Cruz, right? So we've been up in the clean air and the near the ocean and all of that. Santa Cruz isn't clean. I th always thought Santa Cruz was... I always liked Santa Cruz. Oh, it's pretty clean, yeah. It's, a, it's relative, you know. But Mendocino, you find, is cleaner. Oh, it's right on the coast there. It's wonderful. Yeah. 
And we're planning a trip to Europe, a tour next fall, and going to some new places. So is that already booked? I mean, you're... Pretty much booked, yeah. It's pretty much booked. It's, it's really exciting to go over there. Because you see the roots of this culture. You know, you see words that we have borrowed from all these languages, and you see what they mean in those languages, and it helps you to understand. But not only that, just the roots of this whole culture. What is your experience? I mean, you know, you heard Serafina and I talking, and we talked earlier, about like cooperation, is there a difference country to country or in the spiritual growth or how, do, how does it work? Because, you know, really I, don't, I haven't traveled much recently, but you and Serafina are all over. What has been your experience of that? Well, you know, in Europe it's a whole different story because these countries were divided. They're very small countries and they were divided by their languages and all of this. So in, in Europe you have a contrast between the old culture, which can be very suspicious of People. Of new things and change. But the, the, the New Age things, there are centers all over Europe, and they're all doing the same things that we're doing over here, the meditation and the cleaning up your diet and, and healing and all of this. So you have uh, the people who have been opened up to this oneness, they really stand out, you know, in right. contrast to the others. Right. And it's, it's very exciting to go over there and see that. And, of course, it's reflected now in the, in the common market, where they're right. breaking down the barriers. Right, this whole thing with it's countries so is, so, is so silly, you know, there's countries and, you know, all the things that separate us. We were talking about that at lunch, you know, and, yeah. you know, I, and it's so wonderful to see those things breaking down. And, and for you, I mean, because you speak in, in, a, la in a universal language, yeah. so that you see it even more so. I mean... Well, that's really been my ministry. You know, I've, I've uh, dabbled in many religions. But I played in all these different temples. I just gave a concert in a Buddhist temple, Tibetan Buddhist temple. I played in Zen temples. I played for the Unity Church throughout the country and just all different kinds of places. But the music brings the vibration from the source of all. Right. So my ministry really has been to bring the religions of the world together through music. How's it coming? It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> You know, people of all faiths can come to my concerts right. and have an experience. Right. To me, all the religions are great, they're fine, they all have truth in them, you know. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of the words, to me, is to lead you to the religious experience, Absolutely. the transcendent experience. Absolutely. And until you have that experience, you really don't know what the words mean. It's the purpose of the words, to lead you to the transcendent experience. I had an experience when I was 26 that you could call cosmic consciousness, where I, in one month, I lost the fear of death, I resolved all dualities, I f saw the light, the light filled me, the love filled me, and it completely transformed my life. So ever since then, I've, I've known that, you see. Okay, now our audience is not going to let me get ar around asking you in what, s what circumstances you had that experience. Because probably people would like to have it if there was anything you did. Were you meditating? Were you... Well, can I say doing drugs on this show without my parents? Getting... <laughs> well, uh, I think it often happens when you are separated from the usual things that support you. Uh -huh. I was in the Air Force. Wow. I was in Texas in the Air Force. So everyone join the armed forces. That's the key to the spirit. No, I'm only kidding. No, okay, go ahead. I just play. And uh, it just happened. But I, uh, I knew about everyone else's religious experience after that. I'd uh -huh. read these books and right. I'd see how difficult it was to describe it in words. Absolutely. But yeah, I'd it's, understand. It's indescribable. Yeah. It is indescribable. I mean, yeah. music is almost like the closest thing, or art. Or it's something art. that has no words that's in a sense a pure vibration of that. Yeah. And that's why people love it, th you know, throughout the world, and, and it is the universal language. Yeah. So here's a great example. There was a writer, a call, I think from the scholastic period, he wrote for the church, St. Thomas Aquinas, and he was their greatest writer, and they'd come every three or four days to pick up his latest writing. So after many, many years, the, uh, the priest is sent to pick up his latest writing, and the uh, man who answers the door said, uh, there isn't going to be one today. The master has had experience. the experience. Right. He won't be writing anymore. 
There's a little that actually happened. Well, you know, it's interesting. There's a little saying. I think it's a Zen saying. I'm not sure exactly, but the, the gist of it is, is that I, I want to speak to someone who has nothing left to say because I want to have a word with him or something <laughs> like that. You know, it's, and that's really what we want is to is to have the experience, just like you're saying, and then all the words follow from there. But they, yeah. they almost don't have meaning in the same way. When you have a religion, you have all these rules. And until you've had the experience, it's good to have the rules. But once you've had the experience, you don't need the rules. Because the love is, is moving yeah, you. Yeah, the exactly. love takes care of it. Right. Yeah. I, I want to mention one book because there's one book that was written about that experience. A man decided to collect down through history the, the experience of illumination. It had nothing to do with any religion. It's called Cosmic Consciousness. I think this book helps a lot to stimulate it? a man named Buck. Buck? Is yeah. that his first name or his last name? No. I think it was <laughs> A guy last named Buck name. wrote it and it's in the Air Force. I mean, that goes to show no, it's you not a, not a, <laughs> what the spiritual path. Everybody's been trying to meditate, do all these things. He was really not, a Buck sergeant. Right. It was yeah. Buck in the Army. That's, <laughs> we got it. That's great. That's a great story. No, he was a Canadian, but he uh -huh. just... He, is it he, a recent book? or is it, I've never even heard no, of it. No, it's been around quite a while. Uh -huh. My uncle told me about it. But that book, he just said somebody should write about the experience itself. Uh -huh. And by the time he'd collected all the great descriptions, he had actually, you know, earmarked the chief aspects of that experience. And you read that, and it can, if you're ready, it can uh, bring it on. Yeah. You, you think reading the book can help bring it on? That book, I think that it book. could. Really? Well, there are beautiful writings all over, but the whole point is this. Once you read it, that's not enough. Uh -huh, absolutely. You want to ask for the experience itself. Right, and that becomes your prayer. Then if you want, you can start a religion. Right. <laughs> right? And then watch that go into the... <laughs> yeah. I won't say where it is. Well, here's that. another example. <laughs> I'll leave it at that for all. <laughs> they, say, they say when Moses had his experience, right. he wrote down the Ten Commandments. Well, the people came to him and said, well, but how do we apply this to this case? Right. And how do we apply it to that case? And so he wrote a hundred uh, rules. Right. And, and that wasn't enough, exactly. then it became a thousand. Well, you know, it's like, do you understand the spirit of it, or is it the letter? And it's always like we, we try to expand the letter of the law and make it more precise, but unless you understand the spirit, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just all a big jumble of words and how people can get around it and all that, and it, it doesn't make any sense after a time. Yeah. So. So, so your feeling is that this... this, this Coming into the millennium, this, the new age, the you know the the Aquarian age, it, there's been a, a like an influx of of grace or love or something that 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 experience of oneness is is coalescing and cooperation and it's oh, really yes. starting to happen. You can see the difference. Oh yes, I've seen it in my life. You know, uh, where you're in public, you're standing in line, people are nicer. Well, they have all those magazines to read now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, people really are nicer. No, they're I, dropping I the barriers. They're recognizing that they're uh, brothers and sisters. I think. I see it. That more experience of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and just a stranger will be nice, will be helpful. Okay, so yeah, I think happening. now what we're going to try to do is uh, have another uh, couple of minutes of that video, uh, Flower Power from David. And then we're going to go right to uh, Joel playing songs, pieces from his new album, Seven Wheels of Light, about the chakras. Now, we were going to talk about it, but it turns out we didn't get around to it. But it's the chakra system, and, and Joel, hopefully, is going to move us through, a lot of you are familiar with it, move us through the chakra system from the lower chakras into the crown chakra, and that is going to be his intention. So... Whenever you're ready in the, in the uh, booth, let's do the uh, video and then we'll have Joel, we'll come right back to Joel playing. And we're gonna
Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you, Joel. Uh, so, uh, I don't know what kind of experience you folks had, but I, I'm just tremendously honored to be part of this show and I could speak for the crew and I'd just like to thank Joel and Serafina for coming. Uh, watch us next week. This should be another incredible show. I used Incredible for the first time. Good night. God bless you.